Good morning. Good morning, D. Uh, how you doing? Good morning, D, man. I'm doing great. Good, good, good. I don't see nobody up and on, but you, uh, but you and I this morning. No, uh, from next and uh, uh, today, and uh, and Brooklyn. Thank you. 
Mother this morning. And uh, I asked Mother Barnes to give us a song to get his uh, uh, reputation on this morning.
of me. So it be but a man covenant. Yet yeah, if it be confirmed, no man this uh this animal is all added there to then the reconciliation reconciliation comes to Roman one fourteen through seven. I am the death of both of the Greek and to the bearing both to the wise and to the unwise. Fifteen so as much as in me is I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Sixteen, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the law, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Seventeen, for there is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the justice shall live by faith. Yes. So that's the end of that. So we are turning over to our teacher this morning. Good morning, everybody. Our lesson for today is from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 4, 7 through 8, 17 through 18, 20 through 23, 32, and verses 39 through 40. And the subject is not soon, but believing. And believing that God exists is the beginning of having faith in God. And God wants to have a personal relationship with each of us. As we start with verse 1, it says, Now faith is the confident assurance that something we want is going to happen. It is the certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we cannot see it up ahead. Faith is what set our intentions above the crowd. These men of God in the old days were famous for their faith. By faith, <clears throat> by believing God, we know that the world and the stars, in fact, all things were made at God's command, and that they were and they were all made from things that can't be seen. It was by faith that Abel brought a sacrifice that pleased God more than Cain's sacrifice. God accepted Abel's gift, and though, <clears throat> though Abel is long dead, we can still learn lessons from him about trusting God. <clears throat> Uh, Noah was another who trusted God. When he heard God warning about the future, Noah believed even though there were no signs of a flood. He wasted no time. He built the ark and saved his family. Noah's belief in the direct opposite was in the direct opposite from the disbelief of the rest of the world. They refused to obey, and because of his faith, he became one of those whom God accepted. Abraham trusted God, and when God told him to leave home and go far away to another land, which he promised to him, <coughs> Abraham obeyed, not knowing where he was going. And verse 17 says, uh, Abraham trusted God and his promises, so he offered up his son Isaac and was ready to slay him on top of the, of, on, on the altar of sacrifice. And, and, yes, he said, yes, to slay even Isaac, though whom God had promised Abraham that he would a whole nation, he would have through that, through Isaac, he would have a whole nation of descendants. But yet, God had told him to take him out there and put him on the altar and offer him. He was testing Abraham's uh, faith. You know, it was by faith that Isaac knew God would give future blessing to his two sons, Jacob, two sons of Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when he was old and dying, blessed Joseph's two sons as he stood and, and prayed, leaning on the staff of his king. It was, it was by faith that Joseph, as he neared the end of his life, he confidently spoke of God, bringing the people of Israel out of Egypt 
and commanded. He was so sure. He prophesied. He was so sure. He, he told the commander that they carried his ball with them when they left. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after his birth. They saw that God had given him and given them an unusual child. They they did not fear the king's command to have all the children killed. And thirty two said, Shall shall I say more? He said, I, I I don't have enough time to tell you all about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jesse, David, Samuel, and the other prophets. And he said, and these all were praised for their great faith, but did not receive the promise. God had prepared something better. He had a better plan for us, since they would not be made perfect apart from us. They couldn't be perfect apart from us. So he had a plan to get us all together. We would, our faith would come together. Now, as we look at some of the people here in uh and I will listen today. First thing you looked at Abel. And Abel gave God, he wanted to give God his best. So he gave him, he offered the firstborn of his flock as a good sacrifice. Now God was pleased with his sacrifice, and it was counted to him as righteousness. It was what he believed, not what he brought, that made the difference. His offering pointed to the sacrifice of Jesus when he shed his blood for the remission of our sins. And then he talked about this one was not exactly in our lesson today, but it was so interesting. We wanted to bring it to light in this point. We're talking about Enoch now. Now, Enoch was a prophet who preached about the coming judgment upon the ungodly generation. And he called them to repent, not that they repented. His one purpose in life was to please God, and he spared nothing to accomplish this because his faith in God was deeply embedded in his heart. Now, Enoch lived for 300 years, and they say he spent his entire life walking with God every day. His faith in God was his way of life. He was so well pleased, well pleasing to God, that God just transferred him to heaven. Now, can you imagine walking with God so closely that that's what God decided to do? I can only imagine what this must have been like. What great faith. And before he was taken to heaven, he was praised as one who pleased God. His faith was counted to him as righteousness. So much so that he was taken up to heaven and did not see there. Now, that's got to be very interesting and very exciting. He was so close to God that God just transferred into heaven. And they didn't have to get in touch with his relatives. They didn't have to have a funeral, a visitation, a funeral, a lot of this stuff. He was around. And I can imagine when he was taken up, when he was being transferred to heaven, he probably looked down on this earth and laughed and said, Bye, y'all. I'll see you when you get here. Because he was gone. And that must have been an exciting, exciting time. So we, as we look at this, and then we have, we, we got Noah. Now, Noah, we all know about Noah. Noah showed God, showed, uh, God showed Noah that the world was going to be destroyed by a flood. And to build it all. Now, uh, as Noah could have said a lot of things, he could have brought up a lot of excuses, like possibly we would have said. And, and he said, well, you know, uh, building all, for what, God? For what? Because, um, it, it hadn't, we hadn't had any rain. We uh, hear much less talk about the blood saying, set aside. Now, that's what we would have said. Say, well, guess what God said, uh, you know, I checked the city hall and they say I'm not in a flood zone. We don't even have blood insurance. And you telling me to build it all up? Say, uh, no. Say, but uh, Noah was so in tune with God 
he was to talk with God every day, walk with God. He didn't have any problem. He said, okay, Lord, I'm on it. He started then, immediately gathering his supplies to build the ark. And he saw, God saw that Noah was righteous. And Noah knew it was God speaking to him. So he got started building, building. He was, he was laughed at, he was criticized, he was called many ugly names. But he first got on it, yeah, he just kept at it. Noah believed God and his faithfulness was shown by his action. And he, Noah knew he walked so closely with God every day. He knew that it was God's voice. And he didn't hesitate. He figured if God told me to build a boat, I'm going to build one. He told me to build a house, I'll build one. That's just the way these old saints of old was. And uh, um, he said, you know, uh, Lord, I, I'm on it. Well, we would have had all kinds of excuses. Or somebody else, even in Bible time, may have had all kinds of excuses. I can't see why we're doing this. It, 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 ain't, it ain't raining. It ain't raining here. It don't rain here. And we, we hadn't, you know, and he's talking about a flood and, and all that kind of stuff. But no, it's a, God said it. What's going to happen? So he said, and then when the flood came, they said he was 600 years old then. And his face saved his family and repopulated the whole earth. Now, we can, we can learn a lot from, uh, from these prophets, these were called the Heroes Hall of Fame uh, of the church. Uh, they were the heavy hitters. Now, a lot of more of them had, had faith. But these were some that uh, had uh, heavy, heavy faith. They believed, I mean, if God said it, it, there was no question. There was no discussion. And, and, and we should be like that. Right. We, uh, we should be, if God tells us, first of all, we know it's God's voice and God tells us, we shouldn't have any problem. We just go right on and do it. And, and you see, you got to, you got to get this going. You, you got to get your relationship with God right. And then we talked about Abraham. Now, uh, when God told Abraham to leave his homeland and go to a strange place, he didn't mind. And I know that in my heart, I would have a hard time when God tell me to leave all of my familiar surroundings. I'd be saying, my God, this is, this is the place I know. I got a few people. I got a few relatives here. And I got a few people that I know. And you telling me to go somewhere where I don't know anybody. That would really, that would really make me scared. It really would frighten me a whole lot. But Abraham, no problem. He left. And so he had to live in tents and all that. But he didn't mind. He didn't mind living in a tent. Just like Noah didn't mind building the ark for years and years. Because they both was pleasing God. Mm-hmm. Now, even when he offered up Isaac, he was all about pleasing God. But God had promised him that through Isaac, he would give him a whole uh, nation of descendants. But Abraham really said, well, okay, if whatever it is, I'm going to God and promise me that. And now he tells me to slay Isaac. So, well, one thing about it, God must have a plan. So if he said it, I just follow him, I obey him, and just let the, uh, leave the consequences to him. Mm-hmm. And that's what we have to do a whole lot of times. We have to go him you know, and do what God says, and we have to leave the consequences to him. And sometimes we we don't have enough information to make us feel comfortable doing stuff. But once we give it to God, we and God give us the go ahead, we just go. We don't worry about anything else. We go right on. And that's what it was with Abraham, with Noah, with uh, Enoch, and Abel. All of them, when God told them something, because they lived in a way so that they were close to God. They had a close relationship with God. And so when God spoke to them, they knew his voice and they didn't question what he requested of them. And so, you know, having faith in God is believing first that he exists. But that's not enough because, you know, we also understand that even the devils believe that God exists. 
So yes, a knowledge of God is not enough. What God desires is to be one with us in relationship. Our desire to please God comes out of our relationship with God. And sometimes we say, some people can get so careless, they say, well, the man upstairs, well, is that all he means to you, the man upstairs? No, he's your father. He's your everything. Uh-huh. He's your everything. He's not just the man upstairs. Uh-uh, it's supposed to be more personal than that. So, so, you, so we need, need to acknowledge God. We need to watch how we address God, how we present God to other people also. Because if you take it lightly, they may take it lightly, especially if they're depending on you for guidance. So we have to think about it. And just, just so you know, well, I know there's a God. Yeah, I know there's a God. But I'm saying, did they ever know there's a God too? And so what we're saying is that you have to trust God. You have to get it together with God. First, you know he exists. So you have to start building a relationship with him. So that in your time of trouble, you won't have to go wondering. You won't have to be worried. You can say, I will go in my sickle closet and I'll talk to my father, not the man upstairs. I talk to my father mm-hmm. because that's what, that's the one that's going to help you when you get in trouble, when you get worried, when you're burdened down, what do you do? You go in your closet and you get on your knees and you talk to God all you want to and tell him all about things, ask him to help you along the way. So therefore, he's your father. He's a personal thing. You got to have a personal relationship with him. And just like these heroes of faith, these are what I call heavy hitters. They, uh, and there's some more in that chapter, but these are the ones that that was in our lesson, all except Enoch. But I had to bring out Enoch because only two people did not die. They they went to heaven like this, Enoch and Elijah. So we, when we think about some of these things that God told these people to do, just like Abraham, now, you know, if God tell you to take your son or daughter out there and uh, uh, offer them a sacrifice, you're going to you gonna have to really know God. You're going to have to know him and know you know him. But the thing, and the thing about it is that no matter what, your faith in God can keep you going. Your faith in God is the start of your journey toward the, toward the Holy Land. One day, it's all going to be over. And then, what are we going to do? We'll start now getting it together. Because, see, it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. Noah acted on faith, building the ark long before the rain started. And, see, we need to look into the future and plan for it. Jesus is coming. Will we be ready? And that faith planning, it's like it's bringing the future into the present so that we can do something about it now. And we don't need to be so <coughs> to that we don't believe anything. Nobody can tell us nothing. And people have a habit of saying, well, you know, I'm from, I'm from the show me state, so you got to show me. And man says, show me and I'll trust you. God said, trust me and I'll show you. So we just don't know and what we need to do is to make sure that we keep our lifeline open. And these fathers of our faith, they had one central focus, one vision, and one purpose. And that was, they wanted nothing more of, of this life than to please God. Their goal was to be with God forever. And that should be our goal also. Even though we may not see the fulfillment of every promise in our lifetime, these old saints that we're talking about today in Hebrews 11, that many of them did not ever see their, their wishes or their prayers. Or they did not see the fulfilled. But they knew it was coming. They didn't see it, but they knew some of their, their uh, future generations would see, would benefit from that. We are benefiting from some of the future generations. That, I mean, some of the past generation that we had, we're benefiting 
the old saints praying and asking God to, you know, let us have a better day and all that stuff. Now we're reaping. They never saw it. And this is the way it was in Bible time with these heroes of faith. They didn't, they didn't see it. Some didn't get and didn't see any of the blessings that they had asked for. But they knew they could see up ahead. They knew it was coming. And so they were saying, if we don't experience it, if we don't enjoy this, somebody else will. So the thing about it is, uh, even though we may not see the fulfillment of every promise in our lives, we trust that God will do what he said. Faith is knowing that God will work things out, even when we don't see him working. Just because we don't feel like he's working in our lives, he's working. He's working on us every day. That's not good. And he's working for us. Mm-hmm. And so we have to think about the fact that, cause, you know, with faith, you know, it's like faith is a light you see with your heart. But all you see with your eyes is darkness, you say. It looks like to me everything is going down, all this stuff. That's, that's what you see. But faith, what you see in your heart, you say, I know it's a better day is coming. I know God's going to work this situation out for me. I don't know how, don't know when, but he's going to work it out. Because I can look way up ahead and I can see me in a different situation. And we don't see faith. Faith sees the invisible, believes the unbelievable, and receives the impossible. Are there any comments? Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for, for letting me, thank God for you, thank God for that awesome lesson. And really, there ain't nothing to say that more because you don't say it at all. But what we just need to do is, is, is is work on ourselves and have that faith like Abraham do so God be able to work with us like he do Abraham and the rest of us. We need to clean up our mind and our heart and God will do the rest. Amen. 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 Thank God 
for all he done for all of us. Wonderful lesson, Aunt Nancy. Wonderful lesson. I enjoy it. Thank you, dear. And see, we know we know that faith is we can we can look at it this way. Faith is is to hear That's right. to believe to mm-hmm. obey the word That's of God. That's right. That's right. Are there any other comments? If they're not, this concludes our lesson for today. Thank you, Trustee Wooden, for that beautiful lesson this morning. We'll get some money to respond back to the what they had got out of the lesson this morning. You know what? Well, if Nancy's teaching us, we got to get on the right path, do the right thing, and get have that faith. You get that faith and believe in God, you know us of God and know us our Father. Put him first and that faith and he'll take it up he'll take you up from there. Yeah. You, you must have that faith in God. That's right. Because he can do anything except faith. That's right. Anyone else want me to respond to the next? And and I wish I had love. We keep the faith. God will reward us. We just gotta hang in there and hold keep hold the faith as Mother uh Duffy just said. And God will give us great reward. Amen. Anyone okay. else for we then turn it over to our secretary this morning, our student secretary.
for the big and big lady for the devotion this morning. <laughs> and we just gonna close out with the word amen. I'm sorry. We just gonna close out with the word amen, then turn it over to Big and J May this morning for devotion.
being here this morning. <clears throat> I didn't lose any family members last year. But when I think about my age and the fact that I lost three classmates, one of those could have been me. But he chose to keep me here to see another year. And I'm going to do my very best to serve him the best I know how in this coming new year. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, you bless me, Lord. I'll be satisfied. 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 Truly, I do um, trust and believe in my God. And um, over the years, I've heard many pastors say that when we um, sing that song, sometimes we're telling a lie because we are not always satisfied with the way that he blesses me. Well, I can say that I am satisfied with Whatever he gives me, whatever he, whatever God has for me, I know that it is for me. And I uh, thank God that I made it through last year. There's uh, no deaths in my family. I um, thank God for holding our family together. And I thank God for all that he has done and all that he will continue to do in my life. Amen. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so, so I'm glad to hear you say that because I, I agree with you that I learned to be content with what God has done for me. Because I realized trials and tribulations and stuff that come, but I learned to be content. And I am satisfied. I'm like, you, yeah, I am satisfied with what He has done for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, mm. Whether you be satisfied or not, there's nothing you can do about it because he's going to do it his way. Yeah. I, I want to thank the Lord for my health and strength. I thank God for what he is doing for me. I thank God that he has blessed me in so many ways. And I, I just thank him because, you know, God has been good. But he's been good to all of us. We are here today, and we just can hear the praise and the glory. I thank you for my family. I, I just ask y'all, just continue praying for me, that I would do what God would have me to do, and I'll pray for you the best I know how. Amen. 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 What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood. And make me white No found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is it for me. Amen.
man. Thank you, Sister Edwards. Thank you, Deacon J. May, Deacon Ray May, for the scripture and the prayer. At this time, are there any announcements or any remarks that we need to share? Um, Pastor, <laughs> this is um, this is Mr. Howard. We do have one. Um, The Blunt Bridgers House, um, the Black Heritage Museum and Cultural Center, they're having an event Thursday, a reception Thursday, February the 1st, from 5.30 to 7.30. And I'll send out the information. But that's the only I have right now. Other than that, to remember that we're doing the ordination, the deacon ordination for Brother Dennis Former, March 17th at 3 p.m. All right, thank you. Uh, she wanted to make sure that that was uh, known that that was uh, Brother Dennis Farmer, uh, not. Uh, as the program has stated, uh, Denise Farmer. But thank you, Minister Howard, for that. Uh, greetings to everyone. Um, today is the first Sunday, and we would have a communion if we were uh, in the house together. And I know in times past during uh, COVID, we have done the hybrid communion, but we will not do communion today uh the the table is set at the church uh, so we will we will do communion on the third sunday the scripture said as often as you do this you do show forth his death and suffering until he should come again so i would like to start the new year with us uh doing communion together in the house together so we will do communion on the first sunday um Continue to pray one for another, pray for our sick and our shut in. Uh, we pray that everyone has uh, had a wonderful uh, holidays. We are here with the new year and we are faced with the new opportunities and ready to get uh, back to the work of the Lord. Uh, thank God again for the Sunday school teachers, their word uh, 19 that was join in this morning with us in Sunday school and we are so thankful for for them um, and also for those that have stayed around for uh, the word of the day. Uh, again, if you have your microphone uh, if not muted and you have background conversations, we ask that you would please uh, mute your microphone. I will. I will go to a lecture mode here in just a moment so that we could uh, eliminate that, but we ask that you would do uh, what you can. But at this point in time, if there's nothing else, if no one else has another song, another scripture, anything else that we need to bring to our attention, uh, we're going to ask, uh, we're going to ask uh, Sister Elvis if she will again give us a uh, another selection after we shall share the scripture we are going to we're going to read the scripture uh the scripture is going to come from the book of luke chapter 18 book of luke chapter 18 and the uh beginning at the 18th verse Luke chapter 18, beginning at the 18th verse. <clears throat> Excuse me. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, 
honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly can, um, excuse me, And when Jesus said, saw this, he was very sorrowful and said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Amen, amen. I bless you for reading of his word. Uh, at this point in time, we're going to ask that Sister Edwards would again come and lead us, lead us in another psalm. Sister Edwards. Tell me what more. Amen. And I do. Tell me one more. And I do. Lord, I'm your child. Use me as you please. Tell me one more. Can I do? Tell me one more. Can I do? Tell me one more. Can I do? Lord, I'm your child. Use me as you please. Tell me what more. Can I do? Lord, I'm your servant. And I'm at your command. You see, I want to be a good soldier just for you. As I go from day to day, I want to help somebody along the way. Tell me what more can I do? And I want to know what more can I do? Tell me, Jesus, what more can I do? What can I do, Lord? So what can I say, Lord? Just tell me what more can I do? Tell me what more can I do? Lord, I'm your child. Just use me.
but that song actually plays within the message for today. What more can I do? There, uh, we have already shared the scripture for today, Luke chapter 18, uh, verses 18 through 27. We may not, uh, we may not, uh, uh, cover each one of those verses in, in its entirety, but we do want to lift up the 22nd verse, the 22nd verse of that 18th chapter, and it says, Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come, follow me. Amen. Sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come, follow me. Let us pray. Gracious Father, Lord, we thank you again this day for your another opportunity, dear Lord, that I have allowed us, dear Lord, to stand behind the sacred death, dear Lord, and to present your word, dear Lord. For Father, you have been good to us. You have blessed us, dear Lord, to see another year. Father, the first Sunday of 2024. Father, we come right now, dear Lord. We ask, dear Lord, that thou would uh, send the preacher the Holy Spirit, dear Lord, that they may use my tongue to preach your word. Use my mind as a storehouse of your wisdom. Let that same spirit abide with these, your children, that someone may profess Jesus as Lord of their life. Father, we just give you the glory, the honor, the praise, and we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. For, Father, I'm not worthy, dear Lord, but, Father God, you have blessed us, dear Lord, and we just say thank you right now. Father, now, dear Lord, whether in their homes right now, dear Lord, Father God, let this word, dear Lord, sink deep within the heart of your sons and your daughters, dear Lord. Father God, that they may ask the question, dear Lord, what more shall I do? In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you this morning. Uh, my sisters and brothers, uh, we are delighted this morning that you have joined in with us uh, uh, the church body today is joined in through free conference call uh, as we have uh, uh, in the church house the, the heat system is not working so the decision was made that we would uh, as the church body uh, stay in the warmth of your home but I as pastor I have come to the church house to stand behind this desk, to stand behind this pulpit this morning because I feel I, I, I can preach the word anywhere. I can share the word of God anywhere, anytime. Look, this new year, I just want to, I just feel appropriate to stand behind this desk this morning because there's something about being in the house of the Lord. It does something for me. It warms my heart. It warms my soul. It just fills me with joy to know that God has blessed me. Amen. Because it could have been the other way. Yes. I've heard the testimonies of my brothers and sisters this morning who talked about how 2023, so many loved ones have lost. Classmates, families, colleagues, co-workers, neighbors, friends, strangers. There have been a lot of loss. But the Lord has blessed us. That we are able to stand here this morning and wave our hands. You may be sitting in your home this morning. You may have a cup of coffee with you. You may be sitting at the breakfast table. And do you know this morning that you're blessed? The songwriters say, we're blessed, we're blessed, we're blessed. We are blessed. For God has been good. He's been good to us. Uh -huh. 
Good morning as we come. As I said, I made the decision to come and be in the house this morning. And uh, my family, they came <coughs> to support me this morning. Yes, there is a shield in the, in the building. For those of you that, uh, that uh, know that the heat's not working and you stayed at home and the warmth, uh, uh, you, you, you made the right decision if you're cold-blooded. If you if the cold affects you. But God has called some to a higher calling. Some have to go when others don't go. Some have to go when others can't go. Whatever God has laid on you, in 2024, there is a call to do more. We cannot stay complacent, but we have got to step out on the word of God. If you haven't stepped out on God's word before, in 2024, let's do more. Listen here, uh, the 18th chapter of the book of Luke, we find the scripture opens and says, a certain young ruler asks, saying, good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Oh, uh, the very important question this morning. Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? This ruler, this rich young ruler had already heard of the theme of Jesus and knew him to be a teacher and knew him to be one who was able to, to share a word with them. And he comes and said, good master. But Jesus asked him the question, why callest thou me good? None is good save one, and that is God. And herein is a very important lesson for us. You know, some of us, we, we hear how, how good our singing is, how great our teaching is, how wonderful our preaching is, but always remember to give God the glory, for it is God. If Jesus himself can remind this rich young ruler that there is none good save God, we ought to remind ourselves that it was God that gave us this word. It was God that allowed us to pray that prayer. It was God that was allowed us to teach that lesson. It was God that allowed us to sing that song. And we do it all for the glory of God. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have life everlasting. You know, as we were traveling here this morning, and even in the midst, I was thinking of saying, you know, there's no heat. Why go? Stay home. But I found out for me. And you know what? Every one of us have to answer for ourselves. I found out for me that there's something wonderful about being in the house of the Lord. Because the scriptures say that when two or three are gathered together in his name, that he's in the midst on the way here. Just about a thousand feet from where in 2019, we had that accident on September the 15th of 2019 where it caused my wife to have to learn how to walk, how to, how to learn how to talk, how to learn how to do cognitive things all over again. We was coming down the road and there was this car coming out of one of the, that little short development, sub-development right up in there, back in there. And the, the, I saw the vehicle coming and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I, it's not just a case to Edgecombe County, but it's all over. People come to stop signs and they don't like to stop. 
They just want to take a rolling look, and they don't take a good look. And I had to swerve. And the thought came to my mind, Deacon May, was, you should have stayed home. You know, if you stay at home, that wouldn't have happened. But you know what? God allowed me again to glide that vehicle away across the road. And God allowed me to be here. We don't we don't have anything that we go through in life where we don't have some obstacles in our life. The reality of it is every one of us have an obstacle. And there are so many obstacles that could prevent us from doing what God has called us to do. But look at this. The other morning, it was cold outside. The other morning, it was, uh, it, 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 the wind was blowing. The rain was falling. But somebody went to work. Somebody went to the grocery store. Somebody went to the movie. Somebody went on a date. Somebody went here. Somebody went there. But when it comes down to doing what God has called us to do, there are excuses. Watch this. She he asked, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says, I know it's the commandment, do not commit adultery. Do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. The foundations, the foundation of it all there. Jesus said that these are the commandments. These are the things that you must do. And this young man uh, <coughs> responded with, this, all these have I kept from my youth up. What a wonderful response. Jesus has told him, and he said, I've kept these. But Jesus reminds him, as he reminds us all, there's still more that you can do. We haven't done everything. We need to be totally committed to God. Jesus said, yet likest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven. And come and follow me. Let's look at what Jesus said. Thou likest one thing. Yes, this young man said that he have not committed adultery. He has not committed murder. He hasn't stolen. He hasn't bear false witness. He's honored his mother and his father. But yet he likes one thing. Jesus said, sell all that thou hast. He didn't, Jesus didn't just say, sell a third of your portion. He didn't just say, sell a half or three quarters. But Jesus said, sell all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor. This thing became very hard and heavy for this young rich man, because he had an abundance of wealth. He had so much, and it was heavy on him, and his heart was very sorrowful, and his, his sorrow almost matched his wealth, or maybe his sorrow did match his wealth, because he heard of what he had to do. Sometimes we hear what Jesus is calling us to do. Sometimes Jesus is calling us just to do some very simple things, just to go visit the sick. And sometimes we don't want to get out of our comfort zone. He calls, he calls us to go to the prison, but we don't want to get out of our comfort zone. He calls us to love the little children, but we don't want to get out of our comfort zone. We don't want to give all that we have, but Jesus says, Sell those treasures and distribute to the poor, and thou shalt 
have treasures in heaven. Oh, this is what Jesus tells this young man. Don't get confused here now that Jesus is telling us all to sell all. But he does tell this young man to sell all and distribute to the poor. One of the things Jesus is showing here is testing because this young man asked the question. This one man, this young man approached Jesus. This young man wanted to show Jesus that he was willing, but Jesus had to show him that you have to be committed. And church, we've got to be committed. We've got to be committed to Jesus. See, the key point here is not just the selling. Because, as I said, he spoke to this young man. He didn't tell us to sell at all. But he does call us to do one thing that he does close that, 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 that 22nd verse with. And follow me. And follow me. There are those in the world who have not committed adultery. There are those who have not stolen. There are those who have not bared false witness. There are those who have honored their mother and father, but they still refuse to follow Jesus. They are following their own leftly desires. Because there are things in life that draws us away. Although you may not be a murderer, but you've done some other stuff in your life. You've got to be totally and totally committed to Jesus Christ. Church of a living God, see Jesus himself set the example. See, God sent his son down to 40 and two generations. But watch this. Although he came. Although he was baptized, although he walked on the water, although he gave sight to the blind, although he gave, made the deaf to hear, although he made the mute to talk, although he, he raised the dead, although he performed miracles after miracles, he performed, he turned water into wine, church of a living God, and he did so many miracles, but yet there was one thing that he still yet liked to do, but there in the garden of Gethsemane, he went down on bending knees and said, Father, if it be thy will, remove this bitter cup, nevertheless not thy will, but thy will be done. Church of a living God, look at Jesus right now. He still has something else left to do. He had done what the Father had sent him down to do. He came through a virgin birth. He was born in a stable. He was laid in a manger, church of a living God. But yet there was still something left for him to do. He had to go to the cross. He had to die for your sins and my sins. There was still something else for him to do. And church of a living God, he paved the way to show us that we have got to be totally committed to God. We have got to be totally committed. And he said, nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. And because it was the will of God, he went to Calvary's cross. He went to Calvary's cross. He had to go through an unjust court system. They found him guilty of being nothing but the king of Israel. They found him guilty of being who he said he was. They whipped him all night long. They took and placed a crown of thorns on his head. They laid him up to gospel hill. They nailed him to the cross. They 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 put they put a, a robe on him. They speared him in his side. Blood and water come gushing out of his body. They mocked him. They spat upon him. They talked about him. They have done no more. They, they have done no more to you than they did to him. Church of a living God, when they talk about you, they talked about him. But he hung there. He hung on the cross. Never said 
a mumbling word. And he died. He died. But still, what more can he do? They laid him in a tomb. He stayed in that tomb all night, Friday night. He stayed in that tomb all day Saturday. All night, Saturday night. But early Sunday morning, the breaking of dawn, earthquake, the angels came and rolled the stone away. He got up with all power in his hand. And because he got up, he commissioned us through his death, burial, and resurrection to go forth and tell dying men and women that there is hope for you. To tell dying men and women that there is a Savior who died on the cross. And if you want eternal life, all you got to do is follow him. All you got to do is trust him. Become totally committed. What more can I do? Church of a living God, he's blessed us another day, another year, another opportunity to tell somebody that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? What more can we do? Anderson Chapel through uh, 2024, I believe that we ought to study the word of God even more. We ought to pray even more. We ought to fellowship even more. We ought to love even more. We ought to lift up the name of Jesus Christ even more. We ought to lay aside every weight and sin that do us so easily to sell. And we ought to focus on Jesus the Christ and say, Lord, what more can I do? And when Jesus gives you that answer, we ought to go and gladly do what he called us to do. Because <coughs> later down in that chapter, it says, the 28th verse, the 18th chapter, and Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that has left house or parents or brethren, or wife, or children, or the kingdom, for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come, life everlasting. Church of a living God, he's blessing you right now. If you are following him, if you have laid aside that sin, that weight and that sin that so easily besets you. If you have, even if he tells you to sell off, it's time to sell out. But the big thing is, follow me. Follow Jesus the Christ. Is there one today, whether you are listening live or whether you are listening to a rebroadcast, is there when anyone today who do not know Jesus in the part of your sin? And today you want to make that commitment. You want to say, Lord, what more might I do? And Jesus, he may tell you to sell all, or he just may tell you to sell a portion. Or he may not tell you to sell any, but he will say, come and follow me. Will you follow him today? Will you take up the cross and follow Jesus? The songwriter said, I have decided to follow Jesus. Will you follow Jesus this day? Will you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior? If you will make that commitment today, wherever you are, all you got to do is just say, Lord, I yield to the power of the Most High. Father, I believe that, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God and that you died on the cross for my sin. And, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. 
if you're willing to do that today, right where you are, call a neighbor, call a friend, call somebody at the church and let them know I made that decision today and I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. Though no one joins Bye. 